Amen. There's a word from the Lord this morning coming from Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. I'm going to preach this and we're going to get on out of here this morning. We're still in our series on victory. Somebody say victory. victory. On victory. Amen. We thank God and acknowledge our spiritual father, the founding father of this house. Come on, put your hands together for <laughs> Pastor Paul P. Wright in his absence this morning. We honor him. We celebrate him and everything that he is and has done in our lives. Amen. Amen. Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. And the Bible says, Now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpet, have all the people give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the people will go up, every man, straight in. This morning, just for a few minutes on Father's Day, I want to talk about the place of victory. The place of victory. And for a subtopic, I want to give you, you're just one wall away. You're just one wall away. This morning, would you help me preach this sermon by looking at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're just one wall away. No, that wasn't the right neighbor. If that would have been the right neighbor, they would have got excited. Look to the other side real quick and say, neighbor, got some good news for you on Father's Day. You're one wall away from your victory. I wish I had 10 people who could receive that in your spirit and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Over the last couple of weeks, we have established and we know that we, or we all should know that through the work of Christ and the finished work of the cross, God has given us all the victory. Through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we never fight for victory, but we always fight from victory. We talked about having a mindset of victory. We talked about having a vision for victory. But this morning, I want to deal with the place of victory. The place of victory. That's where Joshua and the children of Israel are in our text this morning. They are on the brink of possessing their place of victory. In our scripture this morning at the time of the text, they are almost there. They are almost at the place God has promised them. In fact, the Bible says they are in Gilgal, a place that's only a couple of miles away from Jericho. And it's uh, from this place that they can see victory. It's from this place that they can view victory. It's from Gilgal that they are literally steps away from occupying the place of victory. Somebody say that with me, the place of victory. Canaan represents uh, for them their place of victory. The children of Israel are right at their place of victory. I've discovered that your place of victory is the place that God has promised you. I know, I know we already have talked about victory, but the manifestation of that victory is tied to a place. The fullness of that victory that we already possess in our hearts, we will one day hold in our hands once we get to a certain place. This place could be a place in your mind. This place could be a place in your life. This place is a place and it's tied to your Victory Canaan represents that place for the children of Israel. The Bible says way back in Exodus chapter 3 verse 8, God spoke to Moses out of a burning bush and said, I've heard the cries of my people and I'm getting ready to deliver my people out of captivity and I'm getting ready to take them to a land of milk and honey. So we understand that the place of victory, number one, is a promised place. Not only is it the promised place, but it's the pursued place. It's the place that they've been working 40 long years to get to. Uh, the place that they've been going through the wilderness 40 long years 
to get to. The good news is that while they were pursuing victory, God was still providing victory. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2, God says, I've led you through the wilderness for 40 years and for 40, uh, uh, for 40 years and for 40, uh, for 40 years and I was leading you. Amen. Even while I was leading you, I was giving you the victory. I made sure nothing wore out. I made sure your clothes didn't get too tight. I made sure your feet didn't swell up to the point that I had to get you some new shoes. I made sure everything you had, you had everything that you needed while you was even in the victory, while you were on your way to your place of victory. Uh, even while you were wandering through your wilderness, I made sure everything was all right. Is there anybody in the room who could say, I haven't got where God has promised me yet, but even where I am, God is taking care of me. God, God making sure that I'm taking care. He's still providing. He's still protecting. He's still making ways. Is there anybody in the room who could just give God praise for providing for you even before you get to the place where your victory manifests? Uh, said it wasn't always easy while you were going through your wilderness. You had to go through some bitter waters. You had to deal with some burying some loved ones. The Bible says an entire generation died in the wilderness. As you were traveling through the wilderness, you had some battles to fight. You had some bitter water to taste. You had some burials to attend, but I still blessed you in the midst of where you were. We, we understand, we understand, we understand our place of victory is not only the promised place, it's not only the pursued place but it's the place that God has been preparing us for in Joshua chapter 5 verse 9 the Lord says that now that the reproach has been rolled off of you now you're now you're ready physically now you're ready spiritually you're ready for where it is that I want to take you they are ready to experience what God has for them and I talk about this place of victory this morning and I'm talking and taking my time and being very specific about this place because God that God has for them because I don't believe that the children of Israel are the only ones this morning at their place of victory. I don't believe that the children of Israel are the only ones that we're talking about this morning that are right at the brink of what God has for them. I don't believe this morning that the children of Israel are the only ones that are just a few steps away from having and possessing what everything that God has for them to have and to possess. There is somebody here this morning that's literally at your place of victory. The place God has promised you, the place God has prepared for you, the place God has put in your heart, the place that God has given you a view of. You're literally steps away from occupying your place of victory. God says you are steps away from your place of victory. You're steps away from receiving in your hand what I put in your heart. You're steps away from receiving in your life what I put in your mind. You're steps away from receiving the things that I've shown you and spoke to you and prophesied over you. You're steps away from all of your children receiving salvation. You're steps away from your body being completely made whole. You're steps away from not having to live paycheck to pay. Y'all don't want to just steps away from your place of victory. Your steps away. In fact, I declare this morning the only thing between you and your place of victory is a wall. Only thing between you and this place that God has promised you is a wall. Uh, the only thing that separated Joshua and the children of Israel from the place God promised them was a wall. From Gilgal, they can see this impenetrable wall. This wall that's between 11 and 15 feet high, from 12 to 14 feet wide or thick. They look and they see this wall, and the Bible says that Jericho was strictly shut up. And that means because of the activity on the outside, nobody was going in. Nobody was coming out. It's a wall that they have to deal with. I want to take a little bit of time on Father's Day to talk about the wall. Because you know, whether you be honest with me or not this morning, walls are real. 
walls are real. When I talk about the issue of walls, it's a metaphor because your wall may not be made out of brick. Your wall may not be made out of stone. Your wall may not be made out of cement, but your wall could be medical. Your wall could be relational. Your wall could be psychological. Your wall could be economical. Your wall could even be historical. There is something in between you and what God has promised you. There's something between you and what God has prepared for you. There is something between you and your promised place of victory. And God told me to tell you this morning, don't be distracted and don't be discouraged by the wall that's between you and your place of victory because walls do come down. I wish I had somebody in the room who can help me give God praise because God said walls can come down down. God, I got the wrong crowd this morning. Don't you be disturbed by how big your wall is. Don't be mad at how wide your wall is because God says the wall coming down. God has something for you. God has something for me and sometimes what he has for us to do is right behind a wall. That wall could be somebody but that wall could just be you. And I need somebody in the house who can say, I'm not going another year. I'm not going another month. I'm not going another day with a wall separating me from my promised place in God. I'm not going another moment with a wall separating me from my victory. I need somebody who can make up their mind on Father's Day and say that this is the day that I declare war on my wall. This is the day that I make up my mind. I'm not living with it. I'm not sleeping with it. I'm not going through it. I'm declaring war on my wall. I want to unpack this text this morning because the Lord tells Joshua everything he needs to know. He tells Joshua everything that he needs to do to get beyond this wall. God shares with Joshua all he needs to know to get to this place of victory. The first thing God tells Joshua to do is focus on the promise that's behind the wall. Focus on the promise that's behind the wall. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, focus on the promise behind the wall. See, the enemy wants your focus. He knows he can't just come out and destroy you, so he just tries to distract you. He, he wants to distract you to the point that you get destroyed. He will use anything and anybody to try to steal your focus. That's why it seems like you're going through so much right now. That's why it feels like everything is going wrong in your life right now. That's why it feels like everything falling to pieces right now because the enemy is trying to steal your focus. God tells Joshua, don't focus on the problem, but focus on the promise. You can't look at the wall and get distracted. You got to, you got to pay attention to what I've got for you behind the wall. God tells Joshua, don't focus on the problem, but focus on the promise. Look at our scripture this morning in verse 2. The Lord speaks to Joshua and he talks to him concerning the vision. In verse uh, number 2, the Lord says, Joshua, see he deals with his focus. He says, see that I've given you something in your hands. I've given you Jericho in your hands. I've given you the king in your hands. I've given you the mighty men of valor. He says, Joshua, I want you to focus on what I've already given you. I find it interesting that the Lord told Joshua not to focus on what's before him but focus on what's beyond him. Now, watch this. Now, God doesn't talk to Joshua about the wall first, but he talks to him about what's behind the wall first. He says, Joshua, there's some stuff I got for you behind this big old brick wall. I got some stuff behind this wall for you. I, I got the king over there, the mighty men of valor there over there. Everything that I promised you, this land, this promised land, this victory, I got it behind this he says, Joshua, I know you see this wall. I know you're focusing on this wall. So let me just go ahead and tell you the one thing that I got to say about this wall. And the one thing that God said about the wall in verse number five was that the wall 
was coming down. See, sometimes we pay too much attention to the stuff that God ain't even worried about. We, we paying too much attention to God, to the stuff that God is only speaking to one time. God said that the wall coming down. I got to prophesy to somebody this morning. That wall that's standing between you and your promise. I got to tell you, that wall that's standing between you and your relationship with God. That wall that's standing between you and everything that God has prepared for you, promised you, everything that you're pursuing, that wall got to come down. It's got to come down. Down. I've got the wrong crowd in here on Father's Day. Is there anybody who can say I've been dealing with this wall long enough? I'm ready for this wall to hit the ground. And I come to tell somebody, today is a good day for your wall to come crashing down. Somebody has been worried about the problem while God is telling you to focus on the promise. He tells Joshua, stop worrying about stuff that's about to be extinct. Stop worrying about things I've already determined will come to an end. Stop worrying about stuff I'm getting ready to call to disappear. God says the only thing I want you to focus on is the promise that's waiting for you behind the wall. I just want to give about 50 people who will receive this word a shout. God got something for you behind this wall. God getting ready to blow your mind with what's behind this wall. God getting ready to, oh my God. God uh, to cause you to live at a level you never even thought you could live just as soon as you get to your place of victory. That's why the walls got to come down. That's why you can't settle living for living beneath your value. That's why you can't make your tent and make your home on the wrong side of the wall. You got to do what's necessary for God to bring down your wall so you can be a testimony to somebody. Baby, you can live through it. You can live in it. You can. Y'all ain't going to hear me preach this morning. got to get to your place of victory you got to get to your place of victory you got to get beyond this wall I know you felt like you were born with this wall but you got to get beyond it I know you felt like since you were five years old the things that your father or your mama did Cause you to have this wall, but God telling me to tell your 50 year old self you still got time to get beyond it. You've got to get beyond the wall of the disappointment of your family. You got to get beyond the wall of the disappointment of the people who were supposed to hold your crater you and cutter you, who dropped you and let you break a bone. You got to get beyond your wall because if you don't get beyond your wall you'll never see the hand of God in the land of the living if you don't get beyond your wall God say you'll never obtain everything that I got for you if you don't get beyond your wall you'll never get from the tomb to the table you've got to get beyond Oh, watch this. I'm giving you the city of Jericho. You, you've never been in Jericho. You've never seen Jericho. You've never walked the ground in Jericho. So that means I'm giving you Jericho. He, God said, I'm getting ready to give you access and authority in places you've never had it. Uh, he didn't just say that to Jericho, but he's saying that to you this morning. He's getting ready to give you access to places that you've never been. He's getting ready to give you authority over people you've never had. He said, not only am I going to let you in Jericho not only am I going to let you access a place you've never been in but I'm going to give you authority over the king and the mighty men of valor I'm going to give you authority in places you've never had it's going to be some people who said they won't even listen to you that's getting ready to have to take orders from you you, you, you God's getting ready to put you in another position so oh my God in here, here if you could just get beyond the wall 
God says, I'm getting ready to give you access into places you've never been. And I'm giving you authority over people that you've never had. And you've got the nerve to have your lip poked out. You've got the nerve to have your arms crossed. You've got the nerve to have an attitude over this little old bitty wall. I know the wall looks insurmountable to you. I know it looks like you can't get through it, can't get around it, can't go under it, can't climb over it. I know what it looks like to you, but to me, this is just an itty bitty wall. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm getting ready to stop focusing on the thing that the enemy has put there in place to distract me. I'm, I'm getting ready to take my eyes off the problem and keep my heart on the promise. I'm getting ready, Lord God, to go to my place of victory. I don't know about you. You can sit there and hang up uh, all you want to. You can sit there and be, have a pity party all you want to. You can sit there talking about woe is me all you want to. But I'm getting ready to give God praise uh, for the door he's getting ready to open in my life. Uh, I'm getting ready to give God praise uh, for the wall he's getting ready to crash down in just a few minutes. Access and authority would you look at somebody and tell them focus 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 uh you're almost there don't lose your focus uh, don't be distracted by how you feel focus uh, don't worry about what it looks like just focus uh, don't get caught up on your problem just focus uh, don't get caught up on your problem because the problem is not going to last always you worried about something that god is already taking care of you worried about something that god has already given the expiration date to don't don't worry about it. Just focus. Sometimes when you're going through life, you just got to close your eyes. Because when you look at what you're going through, it can look like you're defeated. But when you close your eyes and just remember what God told you, it'll help you focus. The wall has got to come down. This wall has got to come down because God has some stuff for me behind the wall. Of the bush, that's why I can't settle for being here. I can't settle for just doing what I'm doing. I got to keep pushing till I get behind the wall. That's why I keep praying. That's why I keep fasting because God has already let me see what's on the other side of my wall. Y'all don't want to hear me. That's why I praise and preach and pray like I praise, preach, and pray because God done messed up and let the brother see what's on the other side of the wall. Is there anybody in the room who say I ain't got it in my hand but God done messed up and let me see everything he got for me. That's why I can't let jokers uh, distract me I can't let people push me to a place uh, that causes me to want to stop uh, because God done given me a glimpse uh, of where he desires for me to be uh, and because I got a glimpse uh, I'm getting ready to push uh, beyond my wall uh, is there anybody uh, in the room uh, on Father's Day uh, who can say I can't afford uh, to lose my focus uh, I've got to get uh, beyond this wall. Lord says, Joshua, number one, you've got to focus on these promises. And the promises are behind the wall. But secondly, you have to follow my plan and walk around the wall. God, God, God has a plan for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, God says, for I know the plans that I have for you. God has a definite plan for your life. But here is the problem most times. Even though the plan is definite, the struggle we have sometimes is because the plan is different. Isaiah 55 and 8 says, my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. Here it is, God gives Joshua this plan. It's a simple plan, but it really don't make sense. I mean, it's simple instructions, but when we go to thinking about it, it really don't make sense. What me walking around? 
got to do with this big old wall? They built the wall so a tank can't go through it. So what in the world? Me walking around, hollering and screaming, going to do for the wall. See, sometimes we struggle with the plan of God, not because it's definite, but because it's different. Uh, he says, I want you, I want you, I want you to walk around this wall. I want you to follow my instructions and do just what I tell you. God says, I want y'all to walk around the city of Jericho one time for six days. During this time, get seven priests with seven rams horn, put them in front of the ark, uh, and let them walk one time for six days. Then on the seventh day, I want you to walk around the city seven times. And as long and as you are walking, don't say nothing. And see, that's the part a lot of us would have had about. <laughs> see, that, that's the part that would have messed all, a lot of us up. He say, walk around and don't say nothing. Joshua, the plan is, walk around the city one time for six days. As you walk around the city, grab seven priests with seven ram's horns, put them in front of the Ark of the Covenant. On the seventh day, walk around seven times, and as you walk and don't say nothing. I don't know about you, and I don't know the relationship you have with the Word of God, but to me, that was strange. To me, I couldn't see what is any of that going to do. God said, number one, I'm going to give you victory, but I'm going to give it to you a different way. I, he said, I'm going to give you victory, but I'm going to give it to you the way that I want to give it to you. See, now that's a different kind of warfare. That's a different kind of warfare. Usually in history, when you see somebody in warfare against a walled city, what they would do, they would, they would uh, uh, cut off all communication around the wall. So you can't get any food in. You can't get nothing out. You can't get no water in what they would do was starve the people in the wall so they either had to come out and eat or come out and fight that could have took years on years and years but God said no we're not going to do it like that I want you to do this my way I, I want you to win my way I'm going to give you the victory my way I know what seems to make sense to man but I want to do this my way I don't want you to win by waiting them out I want you to win by walking them out God says I'm giving you victory but your victory is coming a different kind of way your victory is coming a different kind of way. That's why somebody messed up right now. That's why somebody got their head down right now. And that's why somebody feel like they're in despair right now because God calling you to win a different way. <laughs> Oh my God, somebody you've been worried and you've been stressing about your situation. You've been asking God, how can you maximize me but feel like you're minimizing me? How can you increase me by decreasing me? How can you help me by hurting me? How can you better me by battering me? But God says, listen, I'm God. Uh, I'm God, I, I know all, I can do all, I can do whatever I want to do. Two plus two don't equal four with me. It equals what I want it to equal. Y'all are going to hear me in here. Ah, uh, So you need to start worrying about how it's looking, what God telling you to do. You need to start worrying about that and just say, yes, Lord. Uh, yes, Lord, not my will, but your will. Uh, yes, Lord, not my way, but your way. Uh, yes, Lord, in the way you bless me, uh, I'll be satisfied. Would you look at somebody and say, neighbor, I don't know what God is doing. I don't understand it. I can't make sense of it. But I'm going to do what he tell me to do. Because I trust him. I trust that when I come out of this, I'm going to be better than when I went in it. I trust him that when I do what he tell me to do, he's going to make all the crooked roads straight. I trust him not to lean on to my own understanding, but in all of my ways. I'm making a choice to acknowledge him and I'm going to let him direct my path. Not only, not only was the plan different, not only was it different, but God gave you this plan because it was divine. 
Now, look how providential the plan was. Uh, uh, it's different, yes, uh, but it's providential. They, look how many times uh, the number seven is represented here. Uh, seven is a providential number. Uh, look how many sevens are laced uh, within this plan. Now, he says, walk around the city one time uh, for six days. Uh, one plus six uh, equals seven. He, he says, as you walk, grab seven priests. Uh, they need to have seven horns. Uh, on the seventh day. Y'all walk around seven times. Look at how God is all in this plan. God says I know the plan doesn't make sense to you. That's because when you come out I want you to be able to give nobody the glory but me. Oh my God. I know it looks strange to you. I know you didn't think you would have had to do it this way. I know it. I know it. I know it. You thought I was going to give you the victory by letting everybody know that they lied on you. But I'm getting ready to give you the victory by letting everybody think that they telling the truth. I don't want to hear me preach today. I got to get out of here now. Oh my God in here. Sometimes it just don't make sense. But I come to tell you that if you do what God say do. God will make a way out of no way. He'll make sense out of the senses. He'll make sense out of your suffering. Is there anybody in the room who can help the preacher preach and help me testify? God, it was a time I saw my revenge. I knew just how to get it. But he told me to sit there, be quiet, and don't do nothing. And when the smoke settled and the dust cleared, I had the victory. Not only, not only is the plan divine, but this plan I'm getting ready to give you uh, to deal with your wall is discreet. Somebody say discreet. It says, as you are walking, shut up. As you're doing <laughs> what I told you to do, shut up. <laughs> ah, while you're doing <laughs> what I put in your heart to do, <laughs> be quiet. <laughs> oh, y'all don't like this kind of preaching. <laughs> God is getting ready to do something, <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> you're going to have to hush <laughs> until it's done. Oh, my God. Words are powerful, <laughs> and sometimes God will shut your mouth <laughs> so you can't speak against your own victory. <laughs> sometimes God will put you <laughs> in silence <laughs> so that you can't give your opinion out loud. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> God will cause you <laughs> to separate <laughs> and to pull back from your social circle so that you can be quiet so that you can't speak against where he's trying to take you is there anybody in the room who can say preach I'm not acting funny but God got me on silence I'm not being cute God got me on silence I can't talk about what's going on with me because if I talk about it I may run the risk of talking against it because I don't understand it because it don't make sense to me shut up not only will God silence you so you can't speak against your promised place but God will cause you to be quiet in seasons so people can't speak against your promised place y'all don't like me see the enemy has strategically placed some vision villains in your life uh, waiting to hear what you believe God is doing for you waiting to hear huh, what are your plans and your aspirations waiting to hear where, they be where you believe God is taking you to so that they can speak against it see sometimes God will instruct you to do some stuff quietly. Don't tell nobody you're buying a house huh, until you send out the invitation for the housewarming. Don't, don't tell nobody who you're seeing huh, until it's time to invite them to the wedding. Don't tell nobody you're looking for a new car huh, until you ride by the house, blow the horn and say, baby, jump in. Because everybody don't want to see you victorious. I know that's your friend. I know y'all go to Olive Garden on Friday, but everybody don't want to see you win. Sometimes you just got to let God do what God doing and just shut your mouth. Got to learn how 
somebody just keep your mouth closed because everybody doesn't want to see you with victory. I learned that God that sees you and hears you in private is the same God that will bless you in public. Joshua has to follow God's plan. He has to focus on God's promises but last but certainly not least Joshua has to faithfully give God praise. Verse 5 and I'm out of here. In verse 5 the Lord says to Joshua when you hear the sound of the lad of the trumpet the people shall shout and the Bible says then the wall shall come down. Watch this. Now, when you shout, then, I'm getting ready to go somewhere here. Uh, after you shout, then the wall will come down. God says, shout first. I'm getting ready to get out of here. Then your wall will come down. Joshua has to release his praise in faith. See, in the English language, it's a beautiful language, but we're kind of limited in it. See, the English language, there's only one word for praise, and that word is praise. But in the Hebrew language, there are several different words for praise. I just want to help you before I take my seat uh, with some of the words in the Hebrew uh, for praise. Then I'm going to explain to you what kind of praise. Is necessary to move your wall. Uh, first word is Shabbat. Somebody say Shabbat. Uh, this is a praise that is expressed by a loud adoration or shout. It's when we come to church and open up our mouth and we give God a loud praise. Then you have Barak. That word Barak is a praise that is expressed by kneeling to the ground or laying prostrate. Uh, you know, we do that when we come to the altar. Some of y'all get on your knees. Uh, anytime you kneel or bow before the Lord in reverence, uh, that position is a form of praise. Uh, then there is another form of praise, which is yoda. Uh, yada. Uh, praise is expressed uh, by the extending of your hands. Uh, when we tell you to lift up your hands, you are giving to God a yada praise. Uh, it's a symbol of surrender. Uh, it's a symbol of saying, God, while I thank you, now, I'm going to give you whatever's trying to hold me down. Now, God, while I lift my hands and tell you that you're good, uh, I'm also going to give you the burdens of my heart. Uh, God, while I lift my hands and tell you that you're worthy, uh, I'm also going to give you, Lord God, uh, the things that are weighing down my mind. Uh, oh my God, uh, I'm praising you and giving giving you my issues. I'm praising you and surrendering you my will. Then there's another one. The word is Tehillah. That word Tehillah is a form of praise that is expressed through singing of a new song, an unrehearsed song. Uh, uh, songs that may not have no words. Uh, uh, have you ever had God do something so great in your life uh, that you couldn't do nothing but hum a little bit? You couldn't do nothing but sing your own little song. You didn't have no rhyming words. You didn't have no fancy parts. You didn't have no hook. You didn't have no verse. You didn't have no vamp. All you had was a word and a song in your heart. Deacon Weymouth walks around all day with a Tahila praise. He'll hum, 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 hum. Deep what you're singing. I don't know. I just got a song. Deep God just been so good to old Dick and name is still. He just got a song. Then you have a Zamar praise. Zamar is the kind of praise you give God with song and instrument. If I started to sing, trouble don't last always. And Brandon and Chris and all the rest of the band started to play with me. We are giving God a Zamar praise. When the worship team and the choir begin to lift up a song, they are giving God a Zamar praise. But last but not least, you have a total pray. I'm getting ready to get out of here. This is a praise that we express with a loud adoration for the things we have not yet received. Toda is the praise. We give God for the things we believe he getting ready to do. Uh, here is the difference. Here is the difference between Toda 
Shabbat and Shabbat. See, both of them have to do with you opening your mouth and giving God a loud praise. But with Shabbat, you can come to church and give God praise for everything that he's already done. You can look back over your life and remember the tears you cried. Remember the stuff you went through. You can remember the time you wanted to take your life. But told her, you come in church feeling like you're getting ready to lose. Feeling like you don't know when God gonna work it out. But you can Still open your mouth with tears rolling down your face with confusion in your mind and say God I don't know what you're doing but you're still good God I don't like it but you're still able God I can't see my way but I believe that you're getting ready to work it out good evening Calvary may the Lord God bless you real good I just come to tell somebody that it's time for you to give God a total praise a praise for what you then have not received yet a praise for everything God showed you but it have not come to fruition yet you need to give God praise for everything he promised you but you still haven't seen it's time to give God praise for everything you want him to do in your family everything you want him to do in your marriage everything you want him to do in your children it's time to praise God from a place of faith and not a place of thanks. Is there anybody in the room who can say, Preacher, I believe that my best days are before me and my worst days are behind me. And in just a minute, I'm getting ready to give God a praise. In just a minute, I'm getting ready to thank God for everything that I don't even have yet in just a little while get ready to praise God like the wall has already fallen because God said if you're praising like it's done I'll go ahead and I'll do it for you if you thank me like it's done I'll go ahead and I'll do it is there anybody with expectation is there anybody who's been praying you've been thanking God you say God I don't know when God don't know where God don't know how but I know that you're gonna do it I know you're gonna wipe my eyes I know you're gonna heal my body I know you're gonna mend my marriage I know you're gonna bring my family God told you on the seventh day walk around seven times and when you hear the horn blow give me a total praise give me a praise like your wall is already down in just a minute oh, it's a horn that's getting ready to blow and I want you to put at the forefront of your mind the wall that you believe standing between you and your promise I want you to put on the forefront of your mind the wall that's blocking you from your promise place I want you to put at the forefront of your mind every demon every devil trying to fight against your family and with the horn blow I want you to open your mouth and give God a total praise listen now with a total praise you can't be worried about how nobody look at you you can't be worried about your makeup smearing you can't be worried about your hair messing up you got to lose yourself in total you got to lose
use yourself telling God thank you for the things he has yet to do is there anybody in the room who's ready to give God a total praise would you look at your neighbor and say neighbor SOS slide over son I'm getting ready to give God a total praise on the count of three I want you to lose yourself giving God a praise that is worthy of one two three I hear the horn blowing 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 it's happening now would you thank God for the things that is yet to do I hear the horn blowing somebody open your mouth thank you God for mending my marriage thank you God for mending my family thank you God for dealing with my broken heart thank you God for straightening out my finances thank you God for allowing this wall to hit the ground I see walls hitting the ground I see walls coming down open up your mouth in this place yes thank you thank you thank you thank you you're almost there thank you your steps away from your victory you're right at the brink you're one holler away from everything God got for you I'm trying not to come down there but I feel God stretching out in me yes 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 yeah to what the devil meant for evil turn around for your good holler to the things that were the weapons that were formed against you won't prosper I hear victory. 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 Victory! 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 I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, victory is mine, and ain't no way that the enemy can do nothing about it, would you look at your neighbor and say neighbor, today your wall has come down because of your praise, your wall has come down.
Walls have come down. Walls that have been up <laughs> decades come down. Pain and disappointments and words that have been spoken cause some walls to be built in your life. But today, God says, focus on my promise that's beyond this wall follow my plan and dealing with this wall now listen that plan may be for you to go sit on somebody's couch that plan may be for you to go pay for you a therapist and talk through some stuff but to get past this wall I need you to give me praise like it's already done I need you to give me the glory like you're already over it. I need you to give me praise like it's already done.